the Terps could use a two-quarterback system against UConn. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is actually brought to you by 5-Hour Energy. 5-Hour Energy fixes tired fast with zero sugar and convenient portable size. It's the perfect pick-me-up for getting stuff done. Go to 5hourenergy.com and use promo code locked on CFB to receive 20% off your order. This offer is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. I think the Terps could possibly use a two-quarterback system against the UConn Huskies and maybe even than against Michigan State. And when I say a two-quarterback system, I don't just mean two quarterbacks are going to play. I mean that the Terps might try and use a two-quarterback system where, um, let's say, MJ Moore starts the game off, he throws a couple passes, but maybe they bring in Billy Edwards for a read option, and Billy Edwards runs an RPO, and then MJ Morris comes back in, and then Billy Edwards comes back in. I don't love it. I don't really hope that they do this, but I do think that it's a possibility that the Terps don't tip their hand for the Michigan State game. I can see it going like this, where all three quarterbacks play. They use this kind of weird two-quarterback system. They all kind of get in. There's not a clear starter. Maybe it looks like we can take it as MJ Morris is a starter or Billy Edwards is a starter, but he plays all the guys, but I mean, he really incorporates them all into the game plan. I think that it's possible. Coach Loxley did say the team knows who the starter is, so I'm less inclined to kind of go with this, but based off the kind of how the quarterback battle has gone this fall and based off just evidence of our quarterback room, I think it's possible that we use a two-quarterback system against UConn. And I think it could make sense against UConn for a couple different reasons. I think if you're going to use it, use it against UConn because I think this is a team where it's like they might it might be hard for them to stop us if we have two quarterbacks doing two different things and we have MJ Morris throwing the ball then Billy Edwards comes in and mixes it up and is all of a sudden a rusher and can do some special things rushing the football but Billy Edwards can also pass the ball and they do all these different things on the couple drives and they have packages for both guys and then we even see Cameron Edge get in so maybe even all three quarterbacks play, and I think it could be a really interesting game plan for the Maryland Terrapins, and I'm thinking that going into week two against Michigan State, Coach Loxley might want to keep his cards who this quarterback one is going into the Michigan State game. He tells us the team knows who it is. He says that we're going to have to wait till Saturday, basically, to see who it is, but you know how coaches do things. Sometimes they don't even reveal it, and I can see that being another possibility. Even if even if it's not a two-quarterback system, per se, maybe all three guys play almost an equal amount. Like, think about Maryland's bowl game um, in the Music City Bowl game where Billy Edwards played a good amount. Um, um, Cameron Edge also was throwing the ball around. They both played a lot. It looked like Billy Edwards was closer to being the starter at that point, even though it was the end of the season and there's not really a whole lot to being a starter at that point. But he looked like he was closer to being the starter in terms of he got a little bit more snaps. Um, He got a little bit more work. But in terms of the production, I wouldn't say um, that Billy Edwards was just clearly better than Cameron Edge in that game. And so I can see that happening where we see – All three guys play almost equally, but we still have to read into it. Who goes out there first is going to be a huge indicator on who the quarterback is going to be. Who goes out there first? Who plays the most? And there's also a world where I could just be completely wrong um, in saying that they could use a two-quarterback system or maybe all three guys play equally. Maybe that's just not how it goes. Maybe it's more just like... 
Billy Edwards is a starter. Billy Edwards plays every single snap. Billy Edwards gets all the work going into the game. Maybe it's more like that, or maybe MJ Morris is a starter and he gets all the work until we're up by a lot. But let me tell you that the spread is 20 and a half. So even though that's a pretty big spread for sure, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I thought in my head, like UConn Huskies, like we're probably up. I thought we'd be at least 20 point favorites, but I thought maybe it'd be more like 25 or 26 maybe I don't know exactly why I thought that but I was thinking okay UConn like we can get a a lot of guys in we can play a whole lot of different players against the UConn Huskies and we're going to see all the different quarterbacks and it's going to be a little bit harder to tell exactly who the starter is and maybe coach Loxy is going to keep quiet after the game and be like oh yeah we still kind of are deciding going into the Michigan State game and he might make it harder on us Because think about it, a 20-point game, though, would be like, okay, you're up, but you're not up enough. So maybe that actually doesn't happen. Maybe he has to play the starter because we have to win the game. But like a 20, you're up by 20 points, and that spread is usually pretty spot on when Vegas does their work. You're up by 20, like your starters are still kind of in the game if Vegas is right about their spread. And when I think about UConn, it's interesting because they kept it close against Boston College uh, last year. They they lost only by seven. They get they did get smacked by Tennessee. Uh, they did get smacked by Duke. They lost by one to Utah State. Um, they lost to NC State by ten. So it's interesting. Like it could kind of go either way, where we probably demolish them, or it's closer than it needs to be. And my point in that is like. I think that the three quarterback thing only works and you're like, oh, let's play all these different guys. If it's a blowout, if it's not, you got to win the game first. You can't risk anything happening. But I think the two quarterback system could be in place no matter what. Like you could see a two quarterback system right away where the clear game plan is MJ Morris and Billy Edwards both get snaps. I think there's so many different possibilities, honestly, with the quarterback room going into this game. It's probably pretty confusing. So to try and clear it up. So this is pretty much what I'm saying. I'm saying I think Maryland could use a two quarterback system. You guys know what I'm talking about when a team rotates a quarterback in and out like consistently um, and drives um, from first to second down. Like they're going to like change the quarterback. They're going to give the defense different looks like Billy and MJ Morse are both going to be incorporated in every single drive and they're going to have different plays for them. And you're going to see both of them or whoever it is, if it's Cameron Edge and Billy Edwards, whoever it may, whoever it may be. And then I am also thinking that there's a possibility that it might not look like that, a two quarterback system, but it might be um, a world where all three guys kind of play equally. And yeah, Coach Loxley says the team knows who the starter is, but that's kind of just like whatever. And that kind of goes by our heads and it looks like there's still a three man competition. And then going into the next week against Michigan State, we could look at it and say, who the who's the quarterback coach Loxley in the press conference who's the quarterback going into this game and then coach Loxley might be like I'm not going to say that still we know who it is but I'm not going to say that for um because they don't want to tip their hand against Michigan State it's a complicated type of thing this quarterback stuff I felt like we've made it more complicated than it probably most teams are going to make it I'm more just traditional just Name your starter going into the UConn game. Yeah, it, I said it's smart not to, but just name the starter at the end of the day. Like, I don't feel like the UConn game, it matters enough. Like, it's definitely the smart thing to do. Don't get me wrong. It's a smart thing to not name the quarterback going into that game. It helps. Um, It makes it harder for UConn to game plan. But to me, it's like it's UConn. Let's just get the starter the reps. So it, it, it's, it's a kind of interesting. It kind of can go both ways. I know I argued that it was smart, but I also think I'm like, you can just name the quarterback going into the UConn game. It shouldn't really matter. We should be able to win either way. So it's interesting. Quarterback battle is going to be really interesting. I don't know exactly how it goes, but I do know that the defense is going to lead us to a huge victory on Saturday. We're only a couple days away from this first game against UConn, and I think the defense is going to lead us Saturday and absolutely shut down the UConn offense. I will tell you about that 
after this ad from Five Hour Energy. Tired after lunch, you're not alone. In fact, research shows that more than 70% of us hit a wall after lunch. Let a five-hour energy shop help you leap over the wall instead of crashing into it. If you want to get in shape but you're having trouble staying motivated, make five-hour energy shots part of your lifestyle and get the energy boost you need to get fit. We all know you sometimes do not want to go to the gym. Take a five-hour energy shot to give you the feeling of alertness so you can get to the gym. With zero sugar and a convenient portable size, it's a perfect pick-me-up for getting stuff done. The 5-Hour Energy website has flavors galore like watermelon, tropical burst, grape, berry, and more. And there's a flavor for everyone. Try them all. On this site, you can even have an option to build your 12-pack or 24-pack. You choose the flavors, and it's delivered right to your door. If you go to 5hourenergy.com, that is the number 5hourenergy.com, and get some 5-Hour Energy product today, you can use promo code LOCKEDONCFB to receive 20% off your order. This offer is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is good on subscription orders. The code is not good on subscription orders. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. So QB battle this, QB battle that. Who's going to be the starter for Maryland football? The defense is going to win us this game and lead us to victory. It's reasonable to think that even against a team like UConn, offense could come out slow. Offense could come out slow. New quarterback, five new guys up front. You got to establish a rapport with the receivers. I think it's reasonable to think that we could start off slow, not saying we don't get it going later on against UConn and score some points, but um, the over-under for the game isn't that high. Like It's like 44 points or something like that. So they're not expecting it to be some huge scoring game over there in Vegas. So my thing is the offense could start slow. Quarterbacks, who knows what the situation is going to be going into the game. We're closer to knowing. We're closer to having an idea of who the quarterback is going to be. But it's realistic to think that our offense doesn't start right. My thing is the defense is going to win us this game. I think the defense is going to win us this game. And I think the defense is going to dominate. Like, I don't think they're going to allow more than what? A touchdown against UConn? I don't think UConn gets to two touchdowns against our defense. I think our defensive line is going to make it extremely hard on their quarterback um, when I think about our production on our defensive line and who we bring back and all those and the depth we have in that room. I think we're going to get after their guy, their quarterback. I think they're going to have a lot of trouble passing the ball against us and running the football. I don't know how they move the ball against us. I like our defensive line. I think the only way that they move the ball is potentially targeting our corner room, but I think that our defensive line is going to dominate that UConn um, offensive line. I think that they're going to get back there. I think they're going to allow get big hits on their quarterback and they're going to stop the run. And I think it's going to be really hard for UConn to move the ball against us. Plus we're home first game of the um, at home first game of the year. The interesting part about it is it's against UConn. So I don't really expect it to be like a huge crowd, to be honest. And I feel like that's fair to say based on how um, it's gone for us. We're, we're not there in terms of um, crowd production. So I'm not going to say they're going to give us a 12th man and it's going to be like the atmosphere is going to be the reason that we win this game and the defense leads this game. Like that's not what it's going to be. And UConn's going to be too small for an environment. That's not kind of what we are as a program. I just think our defense is really good. And I think coach um, Williams, our defensive coordinator is going to have a really good game plan going into that game. He's improved every single year under the Maryland, uh, has improved the Maryland defense every single year. Um, the Maryland defense has continued to get better and better um, under Coach Williams. And I think it's another year where the defense has the potential to get better again. Do guys have to step up? For sure. Are there still question marks on the defense? Still concerns? Yeah. I'm going to talk about that in my last segment today. Um, just concerns going into the UConn game for the entire team. But I do think that the concerns probably shouldn't show themselves 
too much against this UConn Huskies team. And so I think we get after the passer. I think we can defend on the back end. And I don't think we even have to force turnovers against this UConn team. But if you remember Maryland early in the season last year, defense was lights out in terms of um, turning over the ball early on the season. Like we forced so many turnovers. Um, I remember we forced – UVA into a couple of picks. I just remember every single game in the first couple uh, games of the season for Maryland football, uh, the, like first four or five games, I want to say, like there'd always be a couple turnovers. We were like, we were like number like top three in turnover, like enforcing turnovers in the country and stuff like early on the season. So I think if you start, I don't think we have to do that. I think the defense is going to be able to get off the field on third down, get stops. I think that's going to be a really, um, I think that's definitely going to be a pretty, uh, a definitely a possibility that we just get off the field. But I also think it's a possibility that we force them into turnovers, pressure on the quarterback, maybe a strip sack, something like that. I think that we could definitely, I'm probably predict us to get a turnover or two, a pick from Dante or Glenda Miller in the back end, whatever it may be. And that could um, definitely make it really hard on UConn and to help our offense out. And so I do think that our offense isn't going to win this game. There might be games where we need our offense to win games. Like later on when I think about USC, like USC can score points. Like our defense is going to be good, but later on against USC, our offense might have to score a good amount. We might have to make that, like that type of game might have to be a shootout. But against a UConn Huskies team, I, I think that it's it's not about our offense this game. I know that's going to be kind of what we talk about a lot and how the quarterbacks look and how did that look and everything. But I think that's going to be a bigger storyline going into week two. I think just this game's more about our defense leading this team. I don't think UConn can score more than seven points against us. I don't think they can pass the ball against us. I think they might try some short game. They might try and establish the run, but – I think our defensive line has gotten too good to establish the run up front against us. So I think I feel good about our defensive line. I feel good about our linebacker core, our safety unit, corner room. We'll see. That's my one kind of, eh, maybe UConn can do something. But I still think Maryland, like, we're, we're should be more talented even if our corner room plays not as not great later on the season against the UConn receiving core. Like, should be able to stop that type of team. So – I feel good about our defense overpowering while the offense might still be working out some of the kinks and how to do this and how to do that. And what's our look here? And who do I like in this position in this third and five and how our offensive line is going to hold Like they might have to take a couple drives to get mesh or a half or a quarter. Like, I don't know if I expect the offense to come out bombs away and throwing the ball over the place. It's not really what I expect. I expect the defense to lead the team in. It might be a lower scoring game than a lot of us think, but I think our defense is going to give us the biggest edge of the game. We're only a couple of days away from kickoff. What are my biggest concerns for Maryland football? I'll tell you about that after this ad from Factor and FanDuel. Warmer, sunnier days are on the way, and Factor's got your back for them. Get ready to soak up the sun with our easy, no-fuss meals that take just minutes to prepare, and with options like Calorie Smart Protein Plus and Keto or Chef Crafted Meals help you hit your wellness goals before summer hits. They're fresh, never frozen, and dietitian approved, so you can enjoy nutritious and delicious meals even on your busiest days. Today's the perfect day to start a healthy routine, so why wait? Dive in now with 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. You'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this May with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Head over to factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 and use code locked on college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code locked on 50 at factormeals.com. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We'll have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get three weeks free trial on NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon 
out-of-market game, guys. They're giving you a chance for NFL Sunday ticket. you got to take advantage of it for only $5, for only a $5 bet. You have to do that. So just visit Vandal.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. What are my biggest concerns going into this game for Maryland football? So I definitely have a couple of concerns that I'm worried about for Maryland football, both sides of the ball, more on the offensive side of the ball. I think number one, we have to say, is the quarterback battle. And these are kind of my uh, my rankings for them from most concerned to least concerned. But number one, quarterback. I think it has to be your number one concern going into this game against UConn. How do they perform in their first game? Whoever the starter is, um, I talked about the two quarterback system. However it you sh- however you put it in, however you want to shape it, the quarterback battle is going to be my biggest concern going into that game. That's number one by far, and it's going to be the biggest concern of the season. We've built a pretty good roster here at Maryland, and we've done a really good job. But how do we do at the quarterback spot without Salia? It's not only the biggest concern for this game, it's the biggest concern for the season. And it hasn't been a concern in a while, so it's interesting that now it's a really big concern. So I think the quarterback battle is a really big concern. And whoever the quarterback is, can they lead us? Can they get us in a rhythm? We got to win games and we're depending on them to win games. And that's your biggest part of your team. That is going to be the biggest indicator, whether you're winning or losing games. I could talk about a lot of different things. And I do think the defense will lead us in the first game, but the quarterback battle is definitely going to be my biggest concern because if they don't play well, then I don't know how I feel about going into the Michigan State game. I don't know how confident I'm going to feel. So I think quarterback room is our biggest concern so far. I think the number two thing is offensive line. I've talked about it. I think there's talented individuals up there, and I think Coach Loxley's talked about it. There's talented freshmen, not that they're going to play. There's just talented um, players on that offensive line um, throughout the depth chart, but it's figuring out are the five guys that we put out against UConn, is that truly our best five? Um, how does all these new starters do? Five new starters. We don't have a guy like Delmar Glaze up there anymore who was third-round pick by the Raiders. We don't have that up front where it's like, oh, he can solidify down uh, one of the tackle spots, and we feel really good about Delmar Glaze in the back end. We don't have that anymore. So I think it's the second biggest concern because – if the offensive line doesn't play, it starts up there. Then the quarterback room is going to have a lot of trouble. It's going to be really hard to move the ball. It's going to be really hard to do different things on offense. It's going to be really hard to run the football. It's going to be really hard to pass the football. And if we can't block UConn, I don't know if we can block anybody um, in the Big Ten, to be honest. So I think that's the number two biggest concern going into this game. How does the offensive line look? Does it dominate like I think it will against UConn? I don't think it will dominate in Big Ten play, but I think against UConn it should be able to dominate the uh, um, the Huskies. So it's interesting, um, the offensive line play. I think quarterback plays one. I think offensive line play is two. My number three is definitely that cornerback room. All new starters up there. The slot, who on earth is going to be the slot corner? Who's going to play the nickel or the star position? Whatever you want to call it. I don't know, to be completely honest. Maryland never wants to give us a depth chart before these games, which is just annoying. Like, just release the depth chart for people like me. Like, we want to be able to talk about it. But they don't They don't want to uh, list the um, depth chart. But um, I think it's the, the corner room is interesting. Perry Fisher, Jalen Husky, how do they look? Um, we're expecting them to be pretty big time players and look good. We're expecting Perry's Fisher's length to show up and everything, but who knows um, how how they look? Uh, Perry Fisher is a new starter up there. Um, Jalen Husky hasn't been the Maryland system. New starter there, so I think those concerns for the corner room are definitely pretty big and. It's a less extent against UConn, and I'm often talking about I'm um, going to that Michigan State game as well, um, but I think it is a concern for this game. If UConn can pass the ball on us and they can create some big plays and we can't guard the receivers for some reason, yeah, that's a problem for the rest of the season, but it's also a problem in that game. And it's a game, it's a must win against UConn. Like, there's no ifs and buts. Like We got to win this game. So I think that those are my top three concerns, and those are the concerns I've been talking about. And then just how does the team respond without having Talia under center? But that has to do with the quarterback room. But I do think that's a concern as well. How does that look? How does that feel? It's a different kind of animal back there. How do we feel about it? And I think that's definitely 
a concern for Maryland football. So those are kind of my three or four concerns for um, the Terps going into this UConn game. Tomorrow I'll be releasing my predictions and spreads and what I think will happen in the game and how Maryland wins the game. But for today, that's all we got. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.